Hey guys, I'm Jacob. You're watching the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. I want to give a little history or backstory to this video. Uh, I am a combat veteran myself, earned a combat infantry badge for receiving and returning small arms fire, and deployed to Afghanistan in, well, I guess, 2009, 2010, I've, uh, with the 173rd Airborne as a uh, infantryman and I've been in the 101st as well. And so I've done some videos in the past about um, propaganda because a little bit of what I did was working with PSYOPs and seeing a little bit of how they worked. And uh, then after my time in the military, I did get a bachelor's degree in criminal justice um, in Homeland Security. Uh, where I learned a little bit more, uh, a little bit more about how some of these things work, because I directly studied uh, terrorism and how to uh, combat terrorism on U.S. soil. So uh, the topic of today's video is one that I think is very important, and it is simply: Has the military been blue pilled? And uh, if you're not familiar, uh, people will call a blue pill uh, the Democrat Party, a red pill the Republican Party, or more accurately, to be blue pilled would be to turn conser uh, liberal, and to be red pilled would be to turn conservative. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Michael Hawk today, a uh, former Special Forces uh, captain and uh, TV host and social media personality. And this video isn't really all about him, but he makes a really, really good uh, example of exactly what I'll be talking about. And uh, I'm going to briefly touch on fourth generation warfare, fifth generation warfare, uh, military defection, uh, second civil war, uh, topics like that. But uh, I'm not going to go more in depth on those topics. I'm going to save that for other videos. If you're not aware, uh, this will be a part of a series. And if you need elaboration, you can go to other videos in the series. <clears throat> so, um, I remember my shock when I had to go to uh, the VA uh, in Nashville and I went to the VA parking lot, and almost every vehicle in the parking lot had a Hillary Clinton sticker on the back. Now, being an infantryman, um, I was surprised at how liberal many of my peers were. In fact, my uh, lieutenant, uh, my platoon leader uh, for a time in Afghanistan, um, was a card-carrying communist with a Russian wife. Full-blown uh, communist when we talk about things like the right to bear arms and freedom of speech. He said that he hated Americans because of people like me. That was Lieutenant Solar. And I um, actually ended up getting along with him all right, for a little while when he calmed down on the communism, probably because he was becoming a little too vocal with it. You're not supposed to really be like that in the military. However, um, later I learned that he was still a full-blown communist, so cut ties with him. But the point being, uh, the American population, civilians, are led to believe purposefully that the military is incredibly conservative, patriotic, and honorable. That simply isn't the case. For the most part, the U.S. military is a direct representation of the population in almost every way. So um, very nearly the percentage of American population that is pedophiles, the percentage of the military uh, is probably going to be about equally pedophiles. And the same goes for homosexuals or Democrats, Republicans, or communists, libertarians, anarchists. Whatever the case may be, 
Um, probably not criminals, because being a criminal doesn't work very long in, um, in the military. You'll eventually get caught. Um, so the, the statistics for the criminal element are mostly removed here. Um, but that's not to say that many people don't get kicked out of the military for being a dirtbag and go straight into being a criminal. And I've experienced that with some of my soldiers personally. Anyways, the point being, what you know of your neighbors and peers and their personalities and beliefs and the number of people that hold those beliefs, if you know a large group of people and you don't just have friends that are just like you, is probably about the same as what is in the military. Very similar. That's my wife's dog, it's not mine. I'd rather him not be in this video, but that's all right. So um, you certainly you certainly have essentially as many people that hate the foundational principles of the United States of America in the military as you do outside of the military. And the fact that you raise your hand and say an oath to defend uh, the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic, uh, first off, nobody, an oath doesn't mean anything if there's no accountability. So if veterans like me don't call out other veterans, and if there is no legal process and there is no repercussions whatsoever for breaking your oath, then the oath has no weight. The only value that can be given to the oath is the value uh, that the people who take the oath give the oath. And if you take your oath seriously, you should at least vocally hold fellow veterans accountable. Or, you know, at least try. So, uh, but with that being said, even the people that do think that they take their oath seriously what they believe that oath means is going to be based on what they understand of the Constitution. And being that by and large, the probability is that they were uh, educated in the public school system means that they have no idea what their oath even means. And even if we're not talking about the oath, um, people join the military for all different reasons. Uh, it's not just to serve their country, and not everybody in the military serves their country. Just bottom line. That's it's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. But people join for college. People join because they want to wear a uniform and finally get laid. People join because they want to prove to everybody that never believed in them that they're actually really tough. Uh, people want to join um, for the honor, for family tradition, um, for the money. People join because they can't get a good career elsewhere. People stay in because it's easier to stay in than to get out and find a career. And so you can't tie down any single reason that a person joins, right? Anytime you make absolute statements over a wide body of people, uh, you're wrong. Uh, people are very diverse, and um, there's as many reasons to join the military as there are reasons to do anything else. Um, however, I believe in the oath that I took and I believe that taking an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic means that every single soldier has a responsibility to ensure that there is no one looking to attack the United States Constitution in America. The problem is, is that all of our politicians do, and no veterans do anything about it. Meaning, everybody's talking about who's an oath breaker and who's not an oath breaker. Every single military veteran in the history of the United States military that has taken that oath is an oath breaker. 
However, there's a lot of variables that go into that. And at the end of the day, there are things you can do and steps that you can take to uphold your oath. And the very, at the very minimum, being outspoken in support of freedom, the American way of life, and the United States Constitution it should be the first step. That's what brings us to Michael Hawk, who just uh, publicly uh, talked about or made a post on his Instagram and Facebook page in support of Joe Biden. Now, when you think of, um, you know, off-brand Cheetos or like great value Cheetos, you, you know, they're, they're usually not too good. If you were to think of like a great value Walmart brand of a survivalist or patriot or hero, that would be Michael Hawk. Um, the dude looks, he has these cheesy, cheesy knife designs. I guess he designed for Quartermaster who seems to have disappeared because they said everything was made in America and it allegedly was all imported crap anyways. The entire company was a lie. Kind of probably like Michael Hawk. Uh, he seems to really be into like cheesy selfies where he's trying to look really tough. Like wearing a belt of ammo across his shoulder for absolutely no reason. Uh, great value hero, right? Just off-brand AF. Looks like something that would have been posted from some kind of Pakistani ad or something like that. But... Um, Red pill versus blue pill. This should not be Biden versus Trump. It's an easy representation of Biden. Biden versus Trump is an easy representation of blue pill and red pill. But the reality is, I don't believe that a veteran or someone who's been red pilled would support Donald Trump. Uh, I never have. I've lost subscribers and patrons and friends because I never have. And I never will because I believe that Donald Trump is a socialist. However, the proper course of action for an American patriot uh, who does not believe that their conservative leader is conservative enough is to watchdog that leader and to call them out. Hopefully to publicly call them out and maybe just by some tiny, tiny little degree they can make a change, bring things to other people's attention, and maybe, you know, they could make some progress, right? If you love Donald Trump, and if, especially if you are a veteran, it is your obligation to be watchdogging him more than anybody else. Uh, and I'm not just talking bump stock ban. I'm talking about Patriot, Patriot Act. I'm talking about Kavanaugh. I'm talking about some really dirty socialist crap that's gone on in the last four years. And uh, we'll talk about this coronavirus thing and and the plan, the build up to it, the potential goal of it, all of that stuff. We'll talk about that some other time. But I do not believe that a person who is looking at Donald Trump with an unbiased opinion can believe that he is truly a conservative at all. And the most conservative thing about Donald Trump is that the liberals hate him. That's, that's how it's designed to be, all right? This is how PSYOPs work. That's the point. However, as a veteran, and I don't, but I don't have a problem if you vote for Trump. I get it. Seriously, I do. 100%. I have a problem with Donald Trump. Maybe you have a problem with Donald Trump. Maybe you don't. But if you have a problem with Donald Trump because he's not a true conservative or because he is infringing on your rights or your peers' rights, the correct answer is not to support an absolute socialist communist. Your sworn enemy any veteran who supports Joe Biden is an oath breaker. And it should be very clear that there is honor in serving your country, but every country's soldiers serve their country. 
Remember that Adolf Hitler got one of the highest awards that the German military had and was considered uh, a good nationalist. He sacrificed for his country. That didn't make him a good person. And it, when it comes to patriotism that is founded on a constitution and bill of rights that has to do with people's rights, there's a difference between serving your country blindly and defending the constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. There's a difference there. So just because you serve your country does not necessarily make you honorable. What makes you honorable is supporting an oath. And even if you live a lifetime of honorable actions and deeds, that does not mean that you are for life honorable. You can still become dishonorable. For an American combat veteran, regardless of how honorable his supposed service to his country is, to support Biden or any other of these blue pill people is dishonorable and it is more honorable to be a dishonorable civilian than an oath-breaking veteran. That puts you at the bottom of the list, down with the rapists and the murderers and the pedophiles, all that stuff. Puts you way down there. You have brought dishonor to yourself, your uniform, your country, and your fellow veterans. That's what Michael Hawk has done. And uh, he didn't really like that I posted on his page that he was dishonorable. And uh, he actually sent me this message that I'll show you here. And I'm a bit pedantic. I'm sure you can notice that. Uh, for him to start off by saying that I threatened to kill him actually pisses me off more than anything else because I said what he deserved. Since when is that a threat? Like, I could say that Donald Trump deserves to go to heaven. Does that mean that I'm threatening to carry him to heaven on my back? I could say that... That's so stupid. I hate stupid people. But he's voting for Biden. We already know he's stupid. But he's also a dishonorable piece of scum. And what I want to end this with is if you are thinking through this for yourself, the problem with people uh, as, a, as a whole, not as individuals as a whole, is that they think of things through their own perspective. This will all become much more simple if you think about it from the government's perspective. Imagine that you are the government. Imagine what you need to do to stay in power, to get more power, okay? Now imagine you control the education system. You tell people what to believe. You are in charge of history. You are in charge of education. And you are in charge of the ultimately socialist organization that is the military. And the military is a pretty dangerous thing if you're the U.S. government and you have an entire body of people who have sworn an oath to kill you if you become an enemy of the United States Constitution. How are you going to handle that? How are you going to balance that? How are you going to keep a U.S. military that's potent for doing what you want it to do, but that is not going to kill you? Hopefully, these gears are going to start meshing in your mind, and you're going to start understanding that this is not all what everyone wants you to think it is. Yes, the military has been blue-pilled. The military has been blue-pilled for generations, and it's only going to continue to get worse. And every time you see a news article about some new changes in the military, guess what? It's because it's becoming more and more blue. I think I probably met one staunch conservative in my time in the military. And by staunch conservative, I mean a uh, person who believes in an original constitutional form of government. I don't mean a Republican. I mean a person who believes in the Bill of Rights and individual liberty and a constitutional republic as a method of government. 
which we were very far from. You know, you've got anarchists here, you've got totalitarians here. Right in the center is a constitutional republic, and our Republicans are way over here. And then our Democrats, and then, you know, socialism, and then fascism, and then communism on a scale of uh, personal freedom, liberty. Uh, we're, we're way over there. We're not center at all. It's been a long time since... You know, you, you've been led to believe that to be centrist, um, you have to be in between Democrat and Republican. No, it just, it just means that you're a freaking socialist at best, because even Republicans are socialist right now. What does socialist mean? Everybody's like, Trump, down with socialism. Can you please define socialism for me? And think about the definition of socialism and look at the root word of socialism, how socialism works and what it's for, and then look at our government and think about it. I mentioned I'd go a little bit to fourth and fifth generation warfare. Everybody believes that fourth generation warfare is essentially guerrilla warfare and that if we had another civil war, that it would be fourth generation warfare and it would be like Afghanistan, Viet, freaking Nam, the Revolutionary War, etc. Fourth generation warfare. It's impossible. It's ignorant. They believe that that will happen because they'll believe because of some propaganda and some psyops from other channels like uh, Mark My Words with What's His Face, McCommunist, who, by the way, is just pushing a new political ideology. He has a mission and a goal, and he's trying to accomplish something. He's not just trying to help people out, and he has no military experience whatsoever. I I interviewed a special forces. Well, clearly, uh, as you can see with Michael Hawk, we have communists in the special forces too. So a special force, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Anyways, how this works. And with my uh, Civil War number two and why you will lose video, I talk about the real struggle being a struggle for information. All right. No soldier fights harder than when he's fighting for his homeland. So if he believes that domestic terrorists are killing his family and killing American citizens and trying to kill the U.S. government... In the Constitution, they will fight those domestic terrorists without any second thoughts, and you will have zero defections. None. You will not have a 50% defection rate. Think of yourself as the United States government. How are you going to organize this? It's not going to be like, oh, these American patriots are fighting for the Constitution to overthrow the U.S. government, and you have to go support them, or you have to go kill these American patriots. Because you're a U.S. soldier. That's not what they're going to say. What kind of a moron would think that that's how this is going to work? Like, you don't think the government understands how to manipulate social opinion, news, information. Everybody's talking about mainstream media. Well, your, your, your non-mainstream media now is just as bad. Your whole government, your whole internet is all controlled and you're being given information that they want you to have. This is how propaganda and psyops work. You will not have a giant military defection. You will not. You will ha not have any statistical, statistically relevant military defection. Therefore, fourth generation warfare is impossible. We will have fifth generation warfare. Want to learn about fifth generation warfare? Stick around. I've been meaning to get back into knife reviews, survival videos, and recon and resistance videos for a long time. I am going to start getting back into it. I've just been really busy lately. Subscribe if you want to see that. We will do a, another video on Civil War number two. I will get back into military tactics and small unit tactics. Uh, you need to know how to break combat, break combat, break contact, how to do a basic L-shaped ambush, and you need to stop fantasizing about kicking in doors and killing communists and shooting them in the face because it will get you killed pointlessly. Learn to bushcraft, 
learn to survive, become self-sufficient, become ungovernable. I hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm sure that nobody made it through this whole video, but if you did, kudos. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope that you have a blessed day. And please, if you watched this far into the video and you liked it, go to Michael Hawk's Instagram and Facebook page and tell him that he's a dishonorable scumbag. I, and talking about Michael Hawk this much, guess what? Um, you know, it's only going to help him. I know that. But the truth needs to be out there. Uh, I want to end with this. Michael Hawk said that uh, we are in this together. It's not about hate. It's about love. We either have to row this ship together or we'll sink together. That's what all the communists say. That's the point of communism. Is sinking together. And he wants to drag us all down with him. But he wants to use this bullcrap love language to make it look like he has some moral high ground. No, you are supporting government freaking genocide and mass murder. You are supporting your peers and your fellow veterans being crushed into dust. You are supporting torture and death on a historic scale. So stop covering it up with your love bullcrap. No matter how you give your message of communism, genocide, murder, and torture, no matter how you do it, it will not be love. Love is telling the truth and supporting your fellow human being. And that ain't communism. That's volunteerism, all right? That's individual liberty. That's the pursuit of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. That's all of that. That's all that crap that you're against because you're an oath-breaking scumbag piece of trash. That's all I got. Talk to you soon.